Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about Willow on Disney Plus because nobody else is really talking about Willow. Well, they are, just not in the good kind of way. No. Uh, let's let's talk about this because it does appear that Willow is a complete flop, a complete dud. Disney it, just keeps cranking these on out, don't they? They do. Um, now, this is one that I actually kind of, sort of had a glimmer of hope for. You watched it. You I watched two episodes. It wasn't. It wasn't fantastic. It, it was truly a tell, too. I mean, if I'm being fair, it wasn't. Okay, I'm gonna say it wasn't as bad as some of the things I was seeing people say it was. Yeah. But it wasn't like really, really good either. I mean, it was kind of in the middle. Yeah. And you know, it was okay. But I only saw two episodes. It might have gotten much better. It might have gotten much worse. I haven't got to go back and watch it. Um, so we're going to talk about the uh, the Rotten Tomatoes score, the lack of viewership. Now, it's interesting because they're trying to put a spin on this that it's received mostly positive reviews from critics. But actually, a lot of the outlets I would expect that would like Willow hate it. They're like, uh, this is uh, the Daily Beast, uh, Disney's Willow series, just like the movie, except much, much worse. Oh. We've got Rolling Stone, Willow, Sword, Sorcery, and a head-scratching sequel. Uh, Magic can't save this uneven series. I've seen Ooh. a lot of people calling out the costuming. They're like, why does everybody look like they shopped at a Levi's store? Well, yeah, because they all were in denim. And denim. I remember seeing it and I was like, why are they wearing denim jackets? Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe they, they got their props from the same place Amazon got their props for Lord of the Rings. Maybe. Uh, but we're going to we're gonna talk about this because it does not seem like it's even a blip on the radar at this point. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, almost, uh, let's see, 283,000 subs. Yay! Thank you for the support. Hit subscribe. If you haven't done so already, hit like. Uh, share the videos. That always helps. Leave a comment. A nice one. So this is coming from The Wrap, and they're talking about the most popular streaming shows from November 23rd uh, through, I think, uh, December 6th. Was that what it was? Uh, Willow premiered on November 30th, and it doesn't even register. These are the the uh, uh, top new shows. Hey, Most at least Andor shows. picked up. Yeah, Andor did pick up. They actually talked about that. They said that this is uh, this is interesting that Andor picked up. Um, they said that it might be because it's over and the word of mouth is actually getting out there, that maybe it's not as bad as Maybe, as or they gave thought. the first two episodes. Didn't they run it somewhere around Thanksgiving? Yeah. So yeah. maybe people are like, oh, okay, I'll watch it now. Wednesday, of course, number one. Uh, Netflix is claiming that Wednesday is more popular than Stranger Things. What's weird to me, though, is, okay, here's what's weird to me. Wednesday was really, really popular. It was supposed to be more popular than Stranger Things. It was one of the most, one of the top, uh, you know, streaming shows. Mm. But Andor is supposed to be right behind it when no one gave a shit about Andor. That's a little weird. That is a little weird. Don't you think? And it's, it's, this is exceptional for how many people watched it. Yeah, this I is. I find a, that a little strange. The uh, the interest, I guess. They don't have. I the, don't buy that. I'm sorry. The problem is, the problem is, is we don't have access to what the actual numbers are, for the most part. But, uh, you know, Willow debuted during this time frame. It's not even on the list. We've got, you know, Chainsaw Man makes sense. Santa Claus, is, I guess, makes sense. Uh, Interview with a Vampire, which I forgot was even a thing. The Rings of Power, almost to the bottom already. And uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, The Witch from Mercury, which is on uh, MBS. And I didn't even know about that. I but. question this list for several reasons, but that's another story entirely. All right. December, okay, November 26th through December 2nd. But usually... But it was out then. Yes. That's and they did another one where it was the first two episodes were released at the same time. Yes. It's not even charting. It's not even a blip on this list. And, you know, I don't know if the list is 100% accurate, but it tells me that a lot of people. I don't think it is by what I'm saying. A lot of people are just not interested in this show. Uh, you know, going out again to Rotten Tomatoes, 84% critical score, which is interesting. There's only 58 it's really only weird, too. There's only 58 scores. reviews. I mean, you'd think that there'd be a lot more. I just think everyone, the media included, are just tired of Disney Plus's shows. It's like, you know, they're tired of Star Wars or tired of Marvel. Yeah. And they're not even reviewing it anymore. They're like, I don't care. If it's a big one, okay, maybe, but I just don't give a shit en enough to review it. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting, too. It just seems like they're, they're kind of picking and choosing what they want to review. And you're not seeing nearly as many reviews for the Disney Plus shows as you do for the movies, obviously. But Maybe that's um, all, the good, all the good reviews Disney could afford right now. Uh, that could be, too. <laughs> just, yeah, but 25% audience score. Now, first of all, there's not a lot of user ratings again. No. There's hardly any, but 25% is pretty bad. Now, before people again start saying, you know, Clownfish, you didn't watch it. You can't. You I have, did watch it. I, well, I didn't watch any no more right. past the two because I haven't had time. 
you have no right to talk about clownfish. You can't you can't say anything. But yeah, you did watch it, and uh, a lot of people not care for it. So we have Tiffany B here, five five stars. Probably one of my favorite shows I've seen recently. Well, well maybe it is, but well, you know. House of the Dragon was great. It's missing the suspense because Wait, we know they thought how it House of well, House of the Dragon was pretty good, people said. Same with the Rings of Power. So basically, Tiffany B is like, Willow Willow is better than House of the Dragon and Lord of the Rings. Oh, uh, well, I... Uh, well... <laughs> Jen S. So far, I think it's very well done. I like the story and the production's great. I love denim. No, I added I added that myself. Loving it. They all went boom, boom, boom. Do you notice that? Like, boom, 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 boom. Really well, I think bad. the downvotes are, you know, are fake too a lot of times. Yeah. So like the one star, half stars. I just, you know... Look, what I saw of it, I'm not going to lie, I, it wasn't great. It wasn't, like, the worst thing ever, but it wasn't as bad as I heard people were, like, losing their shit over it. And I'm like, it's not as bad as that, but it's definitely not good. So not the, so far. So this uh, this article is coming from Movie Web, which has done a heel turn on Disney. I remember they used to uh, constantly praise Disney's stuff, and now they're not. They said it kind of arrived with a thud, 24% uh, approval on Rotten Tomatoes from audiences. Disney Plus seemed to be on to another winning series when the first trailers dropped, yes. which I, I agree. I, I was kind of excited. But after the release of the first episodes of the series, it's seen a massive amount of one-star reviews with two big issues being called out again and again and some lengthy critical reviews from audiences. The frequent complaint seems to focus on the writing of the show, which is called bad fan fiction. It can be at times, yeah. Uh, unwatchable and a shadow of the movie. Several reviews even questioned why the team who destroyed Star Wars with the release of Solo were being put in a position to do the same with Willow. Yeah, well, I don't think that Solo is what's... Well, yeah, interesting. Well, they destroyed so Star Wars with Solo. No, 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 no. no. Solo didn't get a lot of hits. It didn't get a lot of hits. Get a lot of views at the movie theater because people were boycotting it because they were sick and tired of Star Wars after um, the Last Jedi. Yeah, that's that's. I mean, honestly, between the two movies, freaking Solo looks like a masterpiece. Yeah, compared to the Last the Jedi. The Last Jedi was um, ass, and and you can trace everything back to the Last Jedi, and they keep trying to step over that. Oh no, it was Solo. Yeah, Solo was more taint than ass. Oh, okay. But uh, but but Last Jedi was definitely. I mean, they're both down 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 there. But they're both, you know, they're both in the nether regions. Yes, but I would say that Solo is taint and the Last Jedi is ass. Can we just not say that anymore? Yes, Please. we can. It uh, makes me cringe. So the uh, additional complaint is how the title character seems to be playing second fiddle in his own yeah. series. Uh, this leads to the often repeated audience comments that the younger cast is brought in to lead the show. It's too modern and not in the context of the world of Willow. Uh, something that comes up in many reviews. This happens time and time again. It's always the passing of the torch, the passing of the mantle. The thing is, you can do that, but uh, where are they going to go with it? Like, if you don't have a show, with, what are you going to do? Another Willow show without Willow at all? Sure. I mean, that doesn't make sense. So there's not really, Willow's family. There's not really. There's not really much you could pass on this one. Um, it's like passing like kidney stone, but there's not really much else you could do because you can't really. It won't be Willow anymore. No. So I mean, pass the torch to what? So Jonathan Kasdan is begging Kathleen Kennedy for a second season already. Uh, to go where? I mean, unless that's Willow as the lead character again, I don't see where else they're gonna go. You can't Willow without Willow. Yes, you can, because you can Star Wars without Luke Skywalker. Well, that, but the thing is, it's Badly. Star Wars. Badly. So it could be, there's lots of characters. This is literally called Willow. So this is Jonathan Kasdan. We're certainly working at it, and I'm begging Kathy, because working with these actors and this crew of filmmakers on this show has been the best experience for my bank account. I mean, the best experience. We still feel like there are a lot of stories and bigger places to visit that don't have I don't think Kathy has a power to prove anything right now, no, which we're is gonna, a whole other video. That's a whole other video that's coming up. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy might not have the power to green light more Willow. Uh, the renewal of any series comes from a number of factors, and one of the biggest ones seems to be the completion rate that a show has. While many reviewers are quick to jump in early on the series, dropping their comments just after a few episodes, um, they said whether these people actually return for subsequent episodes is now what makes or breaks many streaming shows, and that's what happened with, well, I think Cowboy Bebop. I think a lot of people checked in the first uh, episode or two, realized it was dog shit, and then they checked out. And then yeah. Netflix is like, we're not spending more money on this. Uh, that's what happened, I think. Well, I think uh, Lord of the Rings, people weren't watching the yeah. whole thing. They watched like the first episode to see what all the fuss is about. And then by the second or third one, they're like, nope, don't care. Well, yeah, that's that's just it. And we've seen it with Star Wars. Basically, people. She-Hulk. She-Hulk. You know, people will give a show 
you know, a chance or two, they'll watch a couple episodes, and if it doesn't hook them, they're out. The only reason She-Hulk kept getting viewed today, because everybody was waiting for Daredevil, because they kept teasing Daredevil was yeah. going to show up. That's what they want. That's why they kept tuning in. They just wanted to see Daredevil. So that's what they're going to do with this. They'll, they'll tease, you know, characters. Oh, we're going to do a Star Wars crossover. Wouldn't that be fun? They're not going to do a Star Wars crossover. They take place in the same universe now. Uh, you know. It's all connected. It's a multiverse. No, I don't think they're going to um, do that. That 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 would be no. It's but, like Fortnite. I don't know. I only saw two episodes of it. Um, I was going to watch more. I sincerely just haven't had time. And then even if I have time, I'm like, do I want to waste my time on this? And the answer is not really. So that that's kind of how I feel about like all of this stuff. Like there's so many streaming shows out there, but so many of them are subpar that I don't care. I mean, I have very very little time to watch any television. Uh, so if I do, it's got to be something that's actually good or, you know, I, I tried to give Star Wars another chance with it, with the uh, streaming. I tried to give Marvel a chance and the shows were constantly disappointing I and mean, diminishing return show after show after show. I even watched the first couple episodes of Andor and I was like starting to fast forward through because I'm like, this is effing boring. I'm sorry people like it, but the, the, maybe it gets better after the first couple episodes. But people, you, you, have people to hook people, you have to hook people in the first episode. That's the problem Disney's having. That's the problem streaming services are having. They're spending so much time trying to build this thing up uh, that they don't hook you in the first episode or two. And then if you're bored, you're not going to keep watching it. No. You, people only give it so much of a shot. There's used, like Back in the day, people might give it like several episodes a chance, but now they have so many other things they can choose. You have to give them a reason to choose you. Yeah, pretty much. And th there's no compelling reason to even watch this show. Most people have forgotten about the movie. It's been so long. And yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is, guys. So we'll, we'll see. They're just going to keep scraping the bottom of the barrel for every conceivable IP that they have. They're gonna oh, make... I'm worried. They just put a 25th anniversary Anastasia mug out on Shop Disney because now they own that too, you know. And I'm waiting. That'll be the next thing. We're going to we're gonna reboot Anastasia. Or we're going to do a Disney Plus show or a live action reboot. Or we're going to do a modern version of Anastasia. We're going to call it Anastasia. Yeah, Anastasia. Because <laughs> you're numb to it. You're yeah, pretty much. numb to it all. Oh, and then, and then another one that they're talking about is Witch Mountain. They're going to do Escape from Witch Mountain again. But when you read the synopsis of the characters, they sound nothing like the characters. They have Tia in it, but they don't have Tony. It's like Ben. And like Tia is like this student who doubts herself, but she's really good at everything. And and it, I'm like, what? And then, then Ben, who was Tony, I think supposedly Tony, is like, you know, at school and is afraid he's going to get in a fight with people or something. It sounds like an effing episode of CW. It does not sound like Witch Mountain at all. And they're going to do this show now. So they're going to dine, we're going to make it for modern audiences. It literally sounds like a CW show. We're not going to have them be brothers and sister, brother and sister, because they got to get together. We got to ship them. Right. And well, I think that's <laughs> what they're going for. And then they're like, you know, oh, he notices he can move things with his mind or something like that. But like her bra. You know, no. <laughs> but I'm just like, this is stupid. It sounds stupid. They did another Witch Mountain. It was dumb. I know. It was awful. You can't, you know, don't ruin it. It's already out there. People, your fans, what these people keep doing is, and Disney is, you know, among them is they keep taking things that have a lot of fans, make it unrecognizable to the fans because they're they're basically trying to do something that's not that show, but giving it uh, the name of that show because it has uh, recognition. Yep. And it just it, it just ruins everything the whole way around. So, I don't know. That's the next thing they're going to do. Yeah, it's, it's rinse and repeat. Well, and, until... and the viewership will just keep plummeting yep. and they'll be like, why? Why isn't anybody watching Disney Plus now? Yeah, because we've already strip mined anything worth strip mining, and then we ruined what we had. And yeah, so we're going to wrap this one up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.